Hi there, and welcome to a short guide on how to get started with Competitive and TF2. I will try to include some finer details about the scene that other videos and guides may not have covered. If you're brand new to this fantastic game, or have played for thousands of hours in public servers, there's no reason not to try out a more competitive side to the game. It's great fun, very rewarding to play, and a great way of making a few good friends. So, let's go! The video has two main parts. The first one will be addressing league play and how to get into a team, while the second will cover the basics of competitive, like team composition and what callouts are. The timestamps of the major sections of the video are in the description below. You're free to view how competitive plays out before finding out about leagues though. Before you is a global map of competitive leagues in Team Fortress 2. Let's just get rid of the unnecessary details. As you can see, I left something called UGC on every continent. UGC stands for United Gaming Clans and it is a volunteer run organization that hosts competitive gaming seasons. The reason for my choice is as following. It has not only 6 vs 6 players and 9 vs 9 players, but also 4 vs 4, which can be quite enjoyable as well. It is a global league, meaning it is available in every region and has the same rules across the globe. You are not restricted to Team Fortress 2. Overwatch and Dota 2 have their own UGC leagues. The admins and moderators of UGC are experienced, since they have to support the whole globe and are free to speak almost every language if you reach out to correct staff. In my experience, the admins here are great. Just make sure to play fair and keep on the right side of them, and you should have no problems. Now, for a general understanding of the league, how the seasons work, and what the ranks and skill levels are. I'm going to be focusing on TF2, as that's what I have experience with, but some of these points like apply to other games as well. Here's a new term you need to know. When there are 9 players on each team, one of each class, it is called Highlander, or HL. It's a reference to the Highlander TV series, as there can be only one of each class. 6v6 players is commonly shortened to 6s, and 4v4 is known as 4s. UGC currently has 5 divisions, or divs, in HL. 4 divs in 6s, and 3 divs in 4s. From bottom to top, iron, steel, silver, gold, and platinum, with iron being the least skilled, and platinum being the most. There are usually 3 seasons of competitive play each year. In each season, your team will play an official match that counts towards your team's rank once per week, and UGC seasons usually last for 8 weeks. Another type of match your team will play are scrims. These are organised games against other teams in your division that don't count towards anything official. They are simply a great way to practice teamwork, coordination and map knowledge. Your team should also do a map talk once per week to go over what specific strategy you're going to employ in scrims and officials. These are a great opportunity to try out things and ask questions. Make sure you know what your team is going to do at certain points in the game, and what you are expected to do. Iron is the division players will start out in. If your team does well in its season, either by coming first, second or third, you can be promoted to the next division. If you feel your skill has progressed to the next division after the season is over, you can go and join another team in a higher division. If you're unsure about what division to join, try out with several teams and see how well you fit. If you are way too good for the team, you should be able to tell, and if you aren't good enough, then the team will likely not accept you. As for skill expectancy in ranks or divisions, it is commonly accepted that all divisions are divided into three subcategories, low, mid and high. If a team has lost more than half of its matches in iron for example, it's considered to be in low iron. If your team is constantly winning and it is on top of the leaderboard, it is high iron. Everything in between is mid iron. By the way, if you've never played competitive before, you are always iron. Don't think higher of yourself in any case. Speaking of participation, Here's how to actually go about finding and joining the right team for you. 
But before we do that, let's get some definitions straight. There are three types of players in a competitive team. Main players, subs, and mercs. Main players, or mains for short, are members of your team that should always play matches. They are designated a particular class, and they will play that class in all future matches. Then, subs, or substitutes, replace the mains if they can't make it to a game. Subs can be for a single class or all class subs, which can perform equally well with multiple classes. Lastly, mercs known as mercenaries or ringers are players not listed on the official roster of the team that play only if the team doesn't have enough players or subs for a match. It is worth checking the roster page of the team you're fighting before official matches to see if they are trying to sneak in a merc that may be a much higher skill level than your division. There are handy programs out there that check if all players in the server belong to your team's roster. You can choose to be a permanent mercenary and assist leaders in various matches. However, you won't get any medals. But once again, there are workarounds. Some people allow you to roster right their team, meaning you will receive medals without truly participating. Now you know how teams are composed, it's time to find out how to go about joining your first team. You need around a thousand hours to be accepted by most leaders in the lowest league, Iron. You can rack up those hours playing Valve's matchmaking, lobbies on TF2 Center, or pugs and mixes. If you currently have fewer hours, don't worry. Some leaders do take players that have low hours if they are proven to be reliable. You need to make a post of recruitment on the UGC forums. Make sure to include your class, hours, and most importantly, a link to your Steam profile. Other info may be used to further promote trust between you and your leader, like your home city, name, and age. Another way of going about it would be to go to the leader's recruitment section on UGC and add leaders on Steam yourself to discuss your situation, whatever you like more. Wait until you get picked up, or keep adding leaders to ask for a spot on their team. If you fulfil the wishes of your leader, he or she will send you a join password of his or her team. To join the team after he or she has done it, simply visit the UGC team page, press join roster and fill in the password. And you're done. Even if you got placed as a substitute, you will see some action. Hopefully. If you do wish to tread the hard path of being a leader yourself, the process can be done in various ways. Make sure to keep in mind that the maximum roster size for a Highlander is 21, 15 for 6s and 9 for 4s. The first method is to gather some willing and passionate friends, then find the rest of the players from the UDC forums and you're good to go. A second method is to ask your friends if they want to start a team together, aka co-leading. Perhaps your friend has 10 of his that will really like to start playing competitively. That player base will be your foundation and you can persuade people from UGC forums that you already have a team and that they're the only ones left. While we currently have people under a thousand hours which never played competitive before. This is how I did it anyway. And the third one is to go around TF2 center lobbies and matchmaking, find players that perform good, and ask them to join your team. If they do carry the whole server, they most likely have a team already, but you have to try. And doing scrims and map talks alike, you need actual servers to begin with. You can easily get one from serveme.tf, the best service I have ever seen in any video game. It allows you to book free service on specific times with some restrictions. More explanation and help will be in an upcoming video covering specifically being a leader, perhaps. And finally, here's some additional general information about competitive that you need to know. This is nothing new. There are many videos and guides talking about this stuff already and in greater detail. There are three categories of class composition to combat Valve's inaccurate attack defense support system. The medic accompanied by tank classes that protect him is called the combo. The tank classes include demo and soldier, sometimes scout in sixes, heavy demo and pyro in highlander, and any in force. 
Then there are flanks. These consist of a roaming scout and a roaming soldier in sixes, a scout, soldier and sometimes engineer in Highlander, and any in fours. Finally, the assassin classes are sniper and spy. These provide picks for pushers in stalemates in sixes and are main carries in Highlander. In fours, a spy is rarely used, but sniper is run a lot. Of course, this isn't a set meta game, and you're free to experiment as long as it's not rocket jumper soldier and such. If your team plans on being successful, it needs to have frequent matches against other teams, which are called scrims, and map strategy discussions, which are called map talks. This is also important to note that all maps have their specific positions already decided by the competitive community, called callouts. For example, this location on product, a popular competitive map, is called China. This is where snipers like to hang out. On this topic of callouts, the entire success of your team depends on all of the teammates' ability to call and receive calls about various stuff like the aforementioned sniper on China. A healthy conversation of skilled players would look like this. We have grits. Sniper on China. Okay, we're pushing right side. As you see, the medic called that his Kritzkrieg was charged, implying that he's ready to push, but at the same time his sniper notices the opposing sniper on a sniper perch that overlooks a half of the map. Then the demo man, who is supposed to be critzed on, calls that they're going to use the opposing side of the map instead, where the sniper can't reach them. UDC employs a ban system on specific weapons, so if you enjoy playing Poms and Engineer, you might be setting yourself up for disappointment. Check out whitelist.tf and click on the UGC logo to find out more. If you have any questions, or you're lost, feel free to add any of the UGC staff, they're incredibly friendly and helpful. And of course, do remember to read rules. If you don't want to bother UGC staff, you can add Raiki, who is the channel owner and team leader for questions. Link in the description below. Share this video with all your friends. They need to know that a healthy competitive side of T2 does exist, but is hidden from the general public. That demo is down, so. Good. What's my internet? Swap! That's the Med long. I bombed the medic. Bomb the medic salon. Bomb. Spice hurt. Oh. Med. Med is. Uh, Med's with down. Spy down. Uh, spy at nine is. Med. Med down here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>